What is up, crypto hackers? Welcome back to another episode of Hack Crypto, where we hack cryptocurrency and blockchain education. If you guys are brand new here, we cover everything about NFTs, crypto, and blockchain in general. And on this episode, we're going to be going over Arweave. Now, this is usually a video that's not going to get much engagement just because it's about a very developer heavy concept. And sometimes, Doing these videos is more about me sharing information about projects I believe are groundbreaking and less about views and engagement and things like that. I'm super interested in storage on chain and off chain as well. Digging into that is super complex. So on this channel, we try to simplify all these different concepts for everyone to understand. And if that, that sounds good to you, subscribe with notifications on and there is a monthly giveaway that you can potentially win. Before I get into the details of our weave, I wanna give everybody a quick backstory here. I have an eight month old son named Charlie, and I thought a lot about how I was going to pass you know, all these different types of NFTs and digital assets to him in the future. And this brings up quite an interesting issue that if you have not researched it yet, is around the data being stored on chain. And for the first time in history, as humans, we are able to actually make sure that that is permanent. And you are able to pass that from generation to generation and not have to worry about it being erased or burned or anything like that. Throughout history, we've passed all sorts of information. We've passed books, we've passed writings on walls, all sorts of information has been passed, but that is susceptible to all sorts of vulnerabilities. People have burned books, people have spray painted and painted over historic wall paintings and things like that, all sorts of hieroglyphics and all that. So it is a very important concept that we're talking about here. This is about passing information from generation to generation. And this is very much why I started to dig into the importance of storing metadata on chain, because it is a permanent fixture that will exist hundreds of years from now. And we know that. And that is why I wanted to talk about Arweave today, because it is a new type of data storage that is decentralizing all of the centralized storage authorities out there that can effectively remove information if they don't deem it as meeting their policy. Interesting story about our weaves. I actually learned about them in May of last year in 2020. And I was digging in to all this information because our son was getting ready to be born. And I wanted to figure out what happens if some of these big centralized hosting services go down or they just choose not to support certain pieces of information and i'm not able to pass this on to my son and this is when i started digging into all the different minting platforms and i came across what used to be in infinft which was hosted by nft42 they've done an incredible job of building it out it is now nameless they rebranded it and they work with incredible artists to allow them to mint NFTs on chain. So that metadata is using Arweave to put it on chain. Now, Mintbase is also another minting platform that is using Arweave to allow people to mint NFTs on chain. And I fundamentally want people to focus on storing all NFT assets on platforms like this. And I also beg other platforms like OpenSea and bigger minting platforms using different contracts to focus on something like an Arweave because this is how we make sure the permaweb exists and information exists over a longer period of time. Keeping it simple, let's think about it as data stored today, whether it's an NFT or any type of asset that's being stored on chain, needs to be able to be redeemed 500 years from now. How do you do that without being susceptible to a third-party centralized storage facility like an AWS? Almost all pages hosted on the web today are hosted by a handful of centralized hosting authorities. And this, as I mentioned before, does propose quite a bit of an issue when it comes to censorship as well as the future of generations getting their hand on history. When you frame it differently, a few people actually have the ability 
to reframe the history that we have online right now, which everything is going digital. And if you have a handful of people that are the ones supporting that history, that could potentially alter it, it is a little bit of a scary scenario. My goal here in covering our weave is that we are able to preserve history and not allow others to rewrite it. Those others being centralized authorities that are hosting the vast majority of historical information and just any information that is put out on to the internet today. Because this was the dream of decentralization and blockchain in general. But as we start at the protocol level, all the way at the bottom, we do have multiple layers that needed to be put in there and still need to be put in there for a vast majority of the data to be stored. Because the cost is prohibitive to a lot of projects out there that wanted to store a bunch of data on chain, but it prevents them because of those transaction fees. So in a nutshell, on top of Arweave's data layer, you have the permaweb and they used HTTP, which is basically meaning that the browsers that you use today will be able to actually see it and use it, except everything on there, the content is permanent. The apps and the content are all sitting on this permaweb that are permanent for hundreds and hundreds of years, instead of being hosted on a couple of centralized services. So you start with the user, which is us and yourself, and then you have the browser that you're looking through the permaweb on, and underneath that you have the Rweave data storage layer. So the permaweb looks exactly like the current web. It is basically, instead of connecting people over vast distances like the early internet did, this is connecting people over vast periods of time. Now, a very prohibitive aspect to Ethereum, for example, is the fees when it comes to storing data on chain. Simplify how this works, they're using a storage endowment. And similar to other endowment structures, if you don't know what that means, it's basically putting money into a fund. And this is where that principal amount goes. When you make that upfront payment for your storage, it goes out to a decentralized group of hard drives. And these hard drives are dynamically moving for the amount of storage that they are filled at. So everything's operating at capacity and the people that are operating, operating these nodes to support with their hard drive, you are able to get some benefits that are considered interest on that initial payment. So as you make that upfront payment, interest is added onto it over a period of time. And that is rewarded to the people that are supporting using their hard drives all over the world in this decentralized manner. This interest is in the form of storage purchasing power. And they have a lot of information on their site. I know a lot of people are just gonna watch this and be a little bit confused, but I would encourage you to go to their site and see how the endowment actually works. We have this graph that shows the years of the endowment in existence, starting at 200 years, and then the purchasing power for storage goes dramatically up over time. And as the network grows, as people are contributing and mining, all together as this decentralized data supportive permaweb, you have everyone operating with purchasing power more and more over time. And that is because this interest being added on top of that principal payment initially will hopefully support over a very, very long term. I do love just the economics of the endowment concept here because having that principal amount accruing interest that is used as your storage purchasing power pretty much ensures that you're going to have storage for 200 plus years. I have developed this really interesting content moderation concept that is like a democratic approach to the people that are all supporting the network. And I'm not gonna dive too deep into that because it is a rabbit hole on its own. And their yellow paper goes very deep into how that works. But in a nutshell, when a transaction goes through, there are various different ways that people scan that transaction to make sure that it meets you know, non-illicit content. The Arweave team is working with the IWF, the Internet Watch Foundation. So the IWF is providing the Arweave team as well as the community with tools that they need in order to make sure that illicit things aren't going live constantly on the network or on the permaweb. The data stores can choose to reject any sort of information that is being transacted and they can choose not to be involved if they think that something is illicit, which 
which puts the power in the people's hands. So the people are the ones that are determining what the permaweb is going to be. And that is ultimately a revolution in how storage and how blockchain is enabling this new type of storage. 30% of all links on the internet fail within two years. Now, that being said, Arweave's archive is actually allowing people to archive their favorite sites, knowing that it's going to exist for 200 plus years, at least using their endowment. A couple things that are available currently for you to go and research. Argo is where you can go and build the front end of your application that wants to be on the permaweb. Gitopia allows you to store your code base on chain permanently forever. The R drive is that pay once service in order for you to be supported in a decentralized way and all of your data is stored there permanently forever. So some of the more OG projects as a final piece here that have been storing a good amount of data on chain. It is important to remember this is a spectrum. There is a very, very large spectrum. The same as saying, hey, we're a decentralized project and that is a spectrum and the distribution across different wallets and things like that is always going to be a spectrum. So with the NFT projects, Avastars is storing metadata on chain. Chain Faces, an OG project from once upon a time, storing on chain. You have Tiny Boxes, which is storing a lot of metadata on chain. Autoglyphs from Larva Labs and CryptoPunks from Larva Labs, they store on chain and art blocks. And of course, Nameless, like I mentioned, uh, the minting platform that is allowing people to mint NFTs, putting their metadata on chain, partnering with Arweave. There are a ton of projects launching every day. And I know that I can't mention everyone on this video, but ultimately I wanted to get across the point that Arweave is building this infrastructure that I believe to be very important for history, for us to make sure that data is actually passed 200 plus years down the line and we don't have a risk as a society that information is going to be lost because there is plenty, vast amounts of information being put out there every day on the internet, but that does not mean that it will be brought into the, f the future. <laughs> future generations aren't going to necessarily have all that information. It is dependent on a group of people and that is a scary concept. And with NFTs, being such a fan of NFTs for so long now myself, the fear that data and images and everything is not being owned and stored on chain, it is kind of a underpin of the entire concept of NFTs. Finally, if you guys have any doubts on the massive scale of our weave here, they're backed by USV or Union Square Ventures, Coinbase Ventures, Andreessen Horowitz, Techstars, Multicoin Capital, uh, 1KX, and a lot of incredible backers here. So a lot of people believe in this permaweb concept built on top of our weave. So it is a really great and breakthrough project in my opinion. And I think that a lot of cool companies and projects are building on top of this. But ultimately, if we want to have NFTs and assets in the future that are being built on chain that are permanent, we want to have projects like this and we want to have people building on things like this. So that is it for this video here. I hope you guys like it. All the links to the projects that I mentioned as well as Arweave will be below in the description. If you guys are interested in learning more, definitely slap a like and leave a comment below on what you think about NFTs on chain, off chain, the storage spectrum there with IPFS. I'm really interested in this. So leave a comment and I will see you guys on the next episode of Hack Crypto.